After eight months, I need to speak about why I lost contact with my son. In January 2007, my son was born. His mother and I had been separated since the previous summer, and she wasn't always kind toward me. For the first few years, I didn't see him much, but as he got older, he would visit more frequently. He often stayed at my parents' house because my apartment was too small. When I moved in 2019, he started staying with me, sleeping on my couch during his visits. We'd spend time playing video games, watching movies, and texting each other when he wasn't around. He lived with his mother, stepfather, and his three younger siblings, including a 12-year-old half-sister with Down syndrome and two younger brothers. I mention his sister's condition only because it's relevant to the story. The last time I saw my son was last Christmas. He couldn't visit in January because of school and his job. Then, in early February, he stopped replying to my texts. I was worried but assumed he was busy. By mid-February, I received a letter from Child Protective Services, CPS. At first, I feared something had happened to him, but the news I got was far worse than I could have imagined. I learned that my son had been placed in custody due to inappropriate behavior with his sister, which one of his younger brothers had witnessed. This news shocked me beyond belief. I had to speak with CPS and his lawyer a few times. I made it clear that, due to the nature of this situation, I did not want any contact with my son and that I would answer any questions but preferred to be distanced from the case. Since he didn't live with me, I wasn't under investigation. My parents initially wanted to take him in, believing they could help him finish high school. They didn't plan to tell anyone the real reason he was staying with them, and I felt uncomfortable with that. When my sister found out what had happened, she's a bus driver in his school district. She warned my parents that if they took him in, none of the other grandchildren or great-grandchildren would be allowed to visit. My parents love having their grandkids around, so they decided not to take him in after all, and they stopped pressuring me about it. I've always felt some level of unease around my son because of how his mother treated me when we were together, but I never showed it, and I always treated him well. His lawyer, his counselor, and even a teacher of his, who I went to school with, told me how highly he spoke of me. Despite everything, losing him this way still hurts. He knows how I feel about serious misconduct, especially those involving children. I've heard through others that he's upset about being cut off from me, but he apparently understands my decision. Outside of CPS and a few people involved in the case, only my two closest friends know the full story. While I know I'm not the primary person affected, I still feel deeply impacted by everything. I've heard that this wasn't the first time this inappropriate behavior occurred, and the thought that he was acting like everything was normal around me is incredibly unsettling. To make things worse, because he's 17, they aren't making him register as an offender. Even though my involvement with the legal process has been minimal, this situation has taken a serious toll on me. I'm grateful that CPS respected my boundaries, and I think I made the right decision to cut off contact, but it's still incredibly difficult to deal with. I don't know if I can ever forgive him, but he's still my son, someone who was a big part of my life for 17 years, and now he's gone. It's painful to miss him while simultaneously not wanting to see him again. I don't know what else to do but share this anonymously, just to get it off my chest. Edit. For those asking what I could have done differently before this all happened, I'm not wealthy. I've been living on disability and could barely afford to take care of myself, let alone raise a child. When there were complaints made against his mother and stepfather in 2020, CPS didn't see any reason to remove him from the home. I've tried my best to spend time with him, but I didn't have custody. If his mother said no to a visit, there wasn't much I could do. People seem to forget that being a parent doesn't automatically grant you full control over your child's life. 